pray that you are blessed by this worship experience. These are our upcoming announcements. Reminder, tune in and share the stream on Sundays and Wednesdays. Parents, continue to allow your children to participate with our key kids ministry. We are on the move. To all our members and partners 60 plus of age, join in on the second Saturday of each month to our conference call line for our 60 plus fellowship. Call in all plug ministry ages 13 to 17. Join in as we fellowship on the second and fourth Sunday. Please remember to visit our website for the sick and shut in list to pray continuously for them as well as global concerns. You can join us Monday through Friday on the conference call line, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Join us as we launch our Dr. James Thompson Scholarship, October through May. Flyers are in the rest of you. Look forward to seeing you at our Harvest Fest on 1031. Registration will be available. Happy birthday to all the October birthdays. Happy nuptials to all our October nuptials. Special nuptial blessings to our pastor and Lady Marcy Richardson on celebrating 21 years of marriage on October the 2nd. May God continue to keep you in perfect peace. Remember all, this is yet still the year of the unveiling of bigger and better. Be blessed. These are our announcements and our upcoming events. In community news, we want to share some information that may be of assistance to you. Through state, municipal, as well as federal assistance are available for rental and utility assistance. Please visit nj.gov for more information. Please join us on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. via Zoom for a biblical enrichment course taught by our senior pastor. Have you considered being a part of our life group? It is imperative that as a local body that we stay connected. Please visit our website for more information that will be coming for shortly. We want to take this opportunity to thank all of our viewers today. And guess what? If you have not joined, but you're looking for a church home, become a key member today. Visit our website and hit the button that says join and become a member. You may already have a local church, but you want to partner with us. We want to partner with you. It'll help us in the enrichment of the kingdom and our local assembly. Look forward to seeing you soon as well. Good evening, good evening, good evening. We welcome you to our Midweek Connect. Welcome to A Better Life Ministry located at 129 Linden Avenue in Jersey City, New Jersey. Under the leadership of our pastor, Javar L. Richardson, we welcome you and we pray that you are blessed and edified by this worship experience. Remember, share, share, share. Tell a friend, tell a friend, come worship with us on this evening because we've come to lift him, we've come to give him the praise. Lord, we lift your name on high. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands if you come to lift him. Wherever you are in your space, let's lift him on today. your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. So glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross.
your praises So glad you're in my life So glad you came to save us You came from heaven to earth to show the way From the earth to the cross My death you made From the cross to the grave From the grave
just worship him in this moment because we've come to give him the glory. We've come to give him the praise. No matter what the top of our week has looked like, in spite of it all, we're pushing through right in the middle of the week to give him the praise, to give him the glory, and to give him the honor because he deserves all our glory. Hallelujah, Jesus.
to be where you are dwelling in your presence Jesus gotta be If you want to be in his presence, put your hands together and worship and lift up your voice. Because in spite of it all, no matter where we are, we want to be where you are. We want to be where you are, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, you are high and lifted up. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the Midweek Connect. Thank God for our sister, Constance Alston, leading us out in worship and for our uh, musical accompanying that of our musicians and ministers of music, Denzel Mack and Brother Ramon. Thank you. Thank you all so very much. Uh, let, me, let me just say to our viewing audience, I am aware that there seemed to be, for some of you, possibly uh, a lag in stream time. So I do apologize for that. And our tech and media uh, team is working through it. So hopefully you all can just hang on and bear with us and get through it with us. We upgraded our technology and all of its communications are trying to sync together and synchronize. So just, just bear with us as we work through it. But nonetheless, thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for tuning in. I want to jump right into the word of the Lord tonight. Uh, whereas you all are used to a premise text, there will be no premise text tonight, but I will refer to the book of Hebrews uh, in our dissertation as a landing mark for biblical reference. And I'm going to give you three points tonight. Uh, all of those points will hinge from a chapter and a verse of scripture that will solidify and validate our thought for tonight. And our thought for tonight uh, is likened to our theme. Those of our ABLM members and partners and those of you that have been tracking with us down throughout this year uh, and this season, you know that our theme is bigger and better. Not only bigger and better, but the unveiling of bigger and better. We've been believing that God in this season, it's as if that he has pulled back the curtain. It's as if that he has taken the lid off of the container and uh, he's allowed for us to see what our eyes have not seen before and even allow for us to experience in realms, different depths, different phases, different levels of our lives that we've never experienced before. And uh, when you study the number 20, as bibl biblical numerology would suggest that uh, the number 20 represents the completion of cycles, and not only the completion of cycles, but it means uh, the palm, 
the number 20 represents the palm or the open hand. So we've taken that to consider and suggest that God's hand is open. His hand is open toward us. His hand is open toward us. And so that is this year, that is this season that we're in. The season of the open hand, the season of the palm, the unveiling of bigger and better. And tonight, I want to talk from the thought that bigger and better starts with you. Bigger and better starts with you. That's our theme for tonight. Bigger and better starts with you. The book of Hebrews, as uh, you've heard me talk through it just a few weeks ago, uh, the 13 chapters, there is no uh, specific, there's no specific or sure author that we can, as theologians would argue the same, pinpoint, though the credit is lent toward, or it leans toward the Apostle Paul because of his tone and his tenor and having written uh, two-thirds of the New Testament. But nonetheless, the writer in the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews is a book by which the theme or the word, the term, better, it rings through that book, better, better, it rings. And uh, when you talk about better, you're talking about uh, the theme as relate to Hebrews, a better covenant. It talks about a better covenant. It talks about a better priesthood in the sense that Jesus Christ is our high priest. He's the high priest. Uh, it talks about uh, a better country as those who died in faith, they died believing for a better country. It talks about a better, again, uh, pattern, a better pattern uh, in terms of uh, what we see as relates to leadership and, and what we see as that the Old Testament was a foreshadow of the New Testament. It was a foreshadow of the things to come. And so through Jesus Christ, we find perfection, we find completion, we find better. And that better is capsulized uh, in bigger, in bigger, in the sense of the more perfect sense the completed work. You talk about Jesus Christ, you're talking about not only uh, the prophecies that came before his uh, being manifested into the earth, that of the prophets, but his coming, his coming validated and solidified uh, the finished work of the cross. The fact that only he could come, he was worthy enough to come to redeem you and I from our sinful state from our broken state, from our broken fellowship with God. So Jesus Christ, he comes to complete the work, and that is through the cross. And when that work was completed by him dying on the cross, we enter now into a new covenant, a better covenant under grace. Because under the law, we could not live according to it without being uh, penalized for violating it and there was no way that we could avoid violating it because we didn't have the grace. We didn't have the grace of Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ comes, as John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And verse 14 says in St. John 1 that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And so Jesus Christ and his coming, his dying, his resurrection, we are part of the complete work. We're part of the finished work. Uh, that of which Christ has, has done for us. And so now we are part of a better covenant. We're a part of a better order. We are a part of a, uh, better, a better existence. And uh, I want to argue again through three points tonight as I exhort you that bigger and better starts with you. Bigger and better starts with you. At the top of the year, when I communicated what the Lord had shared with me concerning this season and this time, uh, bigger and better uh, were not the superlative terms to use as it relate to the competition amongst each other. But, but bigger and better had everything to do with uh, self-improvement. It had everything to do with being able to uh, move from one, as the Bible say over in uh, 2 Corinthians 3, from one glory 
to another glory, from one level to another level, from one plateau to another plateau. Uh, it had everything to do with first us. Uh, sometimes we look around us and we don't see um, bigger in the sense of glorious. We don't, we don't see better in the sense of without pain or without suffering or without struggle. And so therefore we don't think that the word, the word spoken is, is manifested. But I want to remind you tonight and I will argue again through these points that bigger and better starts with you. Bigger and better starts with you. The first point that I want to submit tonight, uh, you have to consider your mindset. You have to consider your mentality. You have to consider your perspective. Where are you tonight in your thinking? Where are you tonight in your psyche? Where are you? Where are you in your psyche? The first point that I submit to you tonight is mental energy. Mental energy. What are you allowing to capture and captivate and inundate and overwhelm your thinking? What are you allowing to interrupt your thought pattern? What are you allowing to uh, get into your mind in the way of thoughts and emotions that sometimes are scattered, sometimes are, uh, there's a disconnect, sometimes there is, there is confusion. Uh, what, what are you allowing to filtrate through your, through your mind? Has everything to do with your, with your mental energy. Proverbs 23, 7 says, uh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. He says eat and drink, but he really doesn't mean it. He doesn't mean it. And so, so there has to be a connection between, between what we think, who we are, and what we're saying. Because sometimes we're saying things because it's a cliche. We're saying things because we're repeating what someone else said. But, but I am challenging you tonight to let your mind, to allow your words, and your very existence to all combo, to all line up together, so that as the worship has gone before us tonight, we're worshiping and glorifying God right in the middle of the week, not just because it's, it's the middle of the week and it's the right thing to do, but we're actually lining up with the words of the song that he is high and lifted up. We're, we're, we're actually lining up with our worship and our time of devotion and uh, as the saying and even scientists prove that the mind can't really multitask. We, we just tend to do one and two and three and four things at a time, but the mind can only uh, fully 100% concentrate on one plan or one object, one, uh, one purpose at a time. It's, 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 it's what we convince ourselves to believe that we are multitasking. But tonight, I challenge you not to multitask. I, I challenge you to commandeer if there are people around you that you can possibly galvanize them and, and have them tune in, have them zero in into this moment. If you can control your environment and, 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 and ward against all distractions, so that your mental energy can be focused for this moment on what God is saying to you tonight, since bigger and better starts with you. Nothing becomes glorious until in your mind you can perceive that it can be. Nothing amplifies itself, nothing magnifies itself to the next degree, to the next level, to the next realm, until in your mind you can comprehend it as so. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, the thoughts of our mind, they proceed from our heart. So no wonder the psalmist, he prays the prayer, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight because uh, my words, they come from the abundance of my heart, my mouth speaketh, but it, it, it's the thought in my mind formulated and conceived from what my heart ponders, from the root of my heart. And so even David, he cries out in Psalm 51, create within me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. 
because if my heart and my mind is in sync and then it is the mind that gives signals to the body, tells the eyes to see, the ears to hear, uh, movement and, and flow, all of that has everything to do with the central station, the mind. Then, then I've got to be very, very careful in this season as that we're in the fourth quarter of this year and we're getting ready uh, to soon cross over into the 11th month of this year. I need for my mental, my mental sanity, my, my mental calm, my mental focus, my mental ability to be intact, to be intact because I'm getting ready to begin to thank some things as the Lord has given me permission to do. Who is it? The Apostle Paul over in Ephesians 3.20. He says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. So God is able to do exceeding, I-N-G, which is above and beyond, abundant, more than enough. He's able to do exceeding abundant above all that you can ask or think. Could it be that bigger and better has not happened yet because you've not thought enough of it to even ask for it? Could it be that you are cheating yourself out of a miracle? You're cheating yourself out of healing. You're cheating yourself out of prosperity. You're cheating yourself out of new relationships, better relationships, better networks, because you have not thought big enough to even ask. You have not thought better enough to even ask. Sometimes our environment prevents us from thinking bigger. It prevents us from doing better because oftentimes we try to compensate and accommodate those that are around us. But I remind you tonight that bigger and better starts with you. You're looking for it first to appear, but you've, you've got to look within yourself. That's why you get to get your mind, your mind together. The Bible says over in Philippians 2, 5, come on, let's walk through some biblical verses to give us mental exercises. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, the mind of servitude, that he was obedient even to the death of the cross. Uh, I preached a message and talked about a point how that obedience will kill you. Yes, it will. Submission to God's will. Submission to God's plan. It kills your flesh. It kills your will to do the things that you thought you wanted to do or the things that you had planned to do. And sometimes in, in his sovereignty, he overrules. He he, he erases our plan and we're obedient. So the mind that was in Christ Jesus was to please the Father. But may I submit to you that pleasing the Father is a, is a wonderful thing because it is, it is in that same passage that we find that Christ is given a name that is above every name, that at his name every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. You don't come into that glory until you have a mind like him that's willing to do whatever it takes to please the Father, to glorify the Father, and then the Father rewards you. Here's another mind-exercising passage. Where is it? Over in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 5. Uh, Casting down every imagination and every high thing that have exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. You've got to learn how to subdue yourself. Your mind is running crazy and, and your emotions are running amok. You've got to learn how to metaphorically put yourself in a headlock. Put your flesh under subjection. And cast down the, the, the thoughts that are trying to run away from you. The imaginations and the high thing that would, that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Sometimes you know to do better than what you're doing at times. Sometimes you know Bible verses and passages that can minister to you to bring you out of that slump, to bring you out of that rut, to, to, to bring you out of that seat. But sometimes you don't tap into that grace. We're still talking about mental, mental energy. 
is another, is another mind exercising passage over in Philippians 4, uh, verse 6. Be careful for nothing. Don't stress over anything. But in everything, don't let nobody tell you praying too much. Our intercessors are praying 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. and three times on Wednesday, 6 a.m., 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. You can never get enough prayer. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. A lot of times we're asking God, Lord, do this, Lord, do that, Lord, do this, Lord, do that. You need to let your request be accompanied with thanksgiving. After you ask him, now begin to thank him. Lord, I thank you for your peace. Lord, I thank you for your healing. Lord, I thank you for your breakthrough. Lord, I thank you for manifesting yourself in this way. And then it says, the peace of God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. The, the, the only way you can declare bigger and better in the midst of a global crisis, the only way that you can declare bigger and better in the midst of uh, economical uh, challenges, the only way that you can declare bigger and better that there's trouble in the home and trouble in the marketplace is, is that there's a peace. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's a peace that passive all understanding. Now, you can look at this in two ways. It passes understanding in the sense that it gives understanding. And then it passes understanding in the sense that it surpasses. It goes beyond reckoning and reasoning and, and logic. You know that there are people looking at your life and they have just, just, a, just a tad bit of what, what you've been through. Just, just a little bit of your testimony. And even they have to shake their heads as the disciples did to Christ when he woke up out of his sleep and rebuked the winds and told the winds to obey and behave. What manner of man is this? That's what people are asking about you. What type of lady is this? What kind of man is this? That he could have all of this going on. That she could have all of this going on. Yet she still smiled. Yet she's still singing. Yet he still preaches. Yet he still has something good to say. There's a disposition about him or her that speaks loudly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the peace of God. It passes all understanding. And guess what else it does? It keeps your heart and your mind. See how the two of them work together synonymously? It keeps your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. So even though everything around you says panic, the peace of God calms you down. Even though everything else around you says, it's getting worse. The peace of God brings a calm. Oh my God, thank God for the peace. Somebody ought to praise God for the peace of God that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. It's beyond reckoning, it's beyond reasoning. And then at times it does give you clarity. It does give you a reason to testify. And then you get to verse 8 of Philippians 4. Finally, brethren, what sort of things are true? Are your thoughts true tonight? What sort of things are pure, honest, just, good, lovely? Come on, take your mind out of the gutter of, of, of your past, out of the gutter of your failures, out of the gutter of other people's criticism, and, and let your mind think on what's true honest, just, pure. I've said take the litmus test in your mind and decipher and filter through. Get beyond all of that stuff. The fear of whether this project will work out or not. The, the, the fear of whether my vision will come to pass or my dream or this opportunity will present itself. Get all that out the way. Hallelujah. And, and, and these are mental exercises. 26.3, here's another passage. For your mental exercise, that will keep him in perfect peace. Get that holistic peace whose mind is stayed on, on him. God has not given us the spirit of fear, 1 Timothy 1, 7, uh, but he's given us the spirit of power, love, get this, and a sound mind. So everybody around you is, is, is losing it. They're losing it in the store and complaining and, and losing it on the road with road rage and, and losing it and snapping. But you still have a song in the midst of chaos. 
you still have a praise even though you're hurting at times on the inside. It's mental exercise, it's mental energy. I refuse to allow myself to have a nervous breakdown. I refuse to allow myself to have a pity party. I refuse to allow myself to let my mind cheat me out of bigger and better. This is the season. This is the day. This is the time. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. May I remind you that even in this world that we live, though that unfortunately, and we don't gloat or glory in anyone's misfortune or anyone's sorrow or anyone's hardship, Sometimes we, we listen to the news and it only points out the gloom and the doom. But may I remind you that even in this turbulent environment, that there are those that are prospering more than they ever have in their life because they've allowed their mental energy to be channeled in the right directions. They've allowed their mind to be clear enough, long enough to make the right connections, to sign the right contracts, to walk through the right doors, to meet the right people. In other words, they must have heard what I was going to talk about tonight, that bigger and better starts with you. It starts with you. Let's talk about it in point number two. Now that we've established mental energy, and how important it is for our mind to be intact and for our mind to be on course and for our mind to be clear. Because again, as a man thinketh in his heart, so we see, how about self-evaluation? The Apostle Paul, he argues over in 1 Corinthians 11, uh, 28, right at the, at the top clause, he says, but let a man examine himself. Usually we read this passage when, when referring to communion and the Lord's uh, holy communion. And we talked about how that Paul says, for I receive of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the same night which the Lord Jesus betrayed, he took the bread, he blessed it, and he took the cup, and, and we understand that the cup represents his blood, and, and the bread represents his body. And so there are two institutions that the Lord Jesus, he left with the church, that the church still holds fast to today. And that is the institution of baptism, and the institution of Holy Communion when we remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But Paul gets to a place where he says, but let a man examine himself. Over in Matthew 7, we're taught by Jesus as he teaches the Sermon on the Mount to his disciples and the multitude, judge not that ye be not judged. Over back in 1 Corinthians 11, where we are, it says, if you would judge yourselves, you don't have to be judged by anybody else or condemned with the world. But sometimes the hardest, the hardest challenge for us is to deal with us. That's why some of us, we don't like to be alone because we don't want to deal with ourselves. Sometimes it's so much easier to point the fingers at others and be critical of others, but you were challenged tonight to examine yourself, examine yourself, examine yourself, because bigger, amplified, more, abundance, larger, better, which is beyond average and uh, the superlative of good, <laughs> starts with you. Examine yourself. Who have you not forgiven? Who, who are you still holding grudges toward? And the whole idea of communion, it, it's not the wafer symbolically that we take or, uh, or, or the bread or the cracker uh, first Sunday or whatever time that you may commence and indulge in remembering the Lord Jesus. Communion has everything to do with your interaction and your fellowship with others. Yeah, we are to love the Lord our God and our neighbor as ourself. What, what are you struggling to release? And this is not about another person, this is about you. This is about you. Because bigger and better starts with you. 
Maybe there are goals and there are there, there, there goals that you had for this year in the areas of your fitness to lose weight, to gain weight, in the areas of your dieting to, to be more healthy in your eating, in the areas of your finances to make money, manage money, multiply money, in the areas of your gifting and, and your purpose, what, whatever they are, wherever they are, will you evaluate for a minute? Will, will you examine to see where you are? And then it says, eat of that bread and drink of that cup after you examine yourself, after you examine yourself. And again, we're not just, we're not just talking about the Lord's communion, but you're supposed to be eating on the next level. You're supposed to be drinking on the next level. Yeah, yeah. Y you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be soaring to bigger and better. But you have to examine yourself. Who are you intimidated by? Who are you threatened by? You've heard me say on last week, we were talking through Luke 16, uh, where uh, Jesus says, make friends to you of the unrighteous mammon. Sometimes, sometimes you are afraid to make new friendships because you're threatened by the way a person look or, or the way a person talk or the way, the way a person uh, carry themselves. No, you're supposed to be eating and drinking on the next level. Because bigger and better starts with you. You let your mind go there so that your feet can get there. Hallelujah. If your mind goes there, your feet get there, then your hands can receive. This, this is the season of the open hand, open palm. Come on and open your hands and, and, and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. I'm guilty in this area. Or I've fallen short in this area. But, but I'm ready, Lord, to, to, to make amends. I'm ready to stretch. I'm ready, I'm ready to do better, to be bigger. Self-evaluation. Then I, I give you this last point, and, and I'll leave you alone tonight. After you deal with your mental, talking about bigger and better starts with you. After you deal with your uh, self and evaluating yourself and examining yourself, you have to deal with being faithful in the least. I, I want to piggyback again uh, from Luke 16. It says, when you're faithful over another man, the Lord bring you into your own. Uh, and then it says, if you're faithful in the least, that he will bring you into, he will bring you into much. Sometimes we overlook what we call the small because it seemed to be so minute, so microscopic, so unnecessary. And we wonder why we have not come into the more. There's a principle there. You've got to be faithful in some of the things that you've been overlooking. In some of the areas that no one else see. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the room in your house that's, that's the spare room or the laundry room or, 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 or the junk corner. I challenge you to go and clean that room up. Because metaphorically, those rooms in our natural houses or that drawer, some of us, we have that drawer where everything goes into that drawer. Some of us, we live our lives like that. Where we have areas in our life that we should improve, but because we don't feel like anybody can see that or anybody should see that, we tend to overlook it. But when you talk about bigger and better starting with you, it has everything to do with even the smallest areas of your life, the least, the least. You won't even have to pray anymore, Lord, bring me into more, if you'd become more diligent in the least, the least. The least of not cheating your diet the least of not wasting your money, the least, the least of, of communicating properly with those that, that are around you, communicating clearly so no one has to guess, no one has to read your mind, the least of, of where you might have been harboring unforgiveness or, or malice in your heart, what, what, whatever what you've considered to be least, that sometimes we try to mask and we try to avoid and camouflage come on deal with the least tonight deal with the least you know there's a saying that says uh, uh 
the details matter. <laughs> the details matter. And the details, they do matter. Because bigger and better starts with, it starts with you. But you got to get your mind there. Let your mind go there. Let your mind go there that your marriage can be better. That your marriage can make it. That your children are blessed. That your children will excel. That your body is healed. That, that your mind is being renewed and, and your heart is being repaired and, and your soul is being restored. Let your mind go there that business opportunities are waiting for you. Let your mind go there that, that new locations are calling you. Let your mind go there that, yeah, travel is a part of your future. Let your mind go there that, that, that opportunities, again, are knocking, that new friendships are forming. Let your mind go there that you're walking closer with God than you ever have before. Hallelujah. 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 You ought to lay hands on your mind tonight and say, mind, go there. Just, just mind, go there. Go there. I, I give you permission to go there. Hallelujah. I give you permission to go there. In the name of Jesus. Because bigger and better starts with you. And as your mind go there, you begin to examine yourself. God asks Adam in, in Genesis, where art thou? You're not where I put you. It's because you drifted away. Call yourself back into order and be faithful in the least. When you look at Matthew 25, where is it? Verses 21 and 23, the man traveling left talents. He gave one, he gave five, he gave two. And the one with the five and the one with the two, he commended them in verses 21 and 23 because they made good, they reproduced. They understood that bigger and better was not with their Lord or their master. It started with them. And he says, you've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you rulers over many. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. There's joy for you tonight. Not in the by and by. There's joy for you tonight right here in the land of the living. What? Yeah, right here in the midst of a pandemic. Really? Right here in a chaotic environment, there is joy in the presence of God. Now let your mental energy comprehend it and evaluate yourself, examine yourself, and everything not like his will, not matching up with his word, not lining up with his plan for your life in this season. Make the adjustments and be faithful in the least. Whatever the least is, if it's that small and it doesn't make sense, that's a good place to start, <laughs> to be faithful in. When you put your word out, honor it. If by chance you fall short, apologize. Make an adjustment. Make a new arrangement. The least as, I'll call you back. Really do it. The least as, I'll be there. Well, then get there. Whatever that is. Look at the small areas in your life that you've overlooked. Relationship-wise, spending-wise, health-wise, home-wise, family-wise, and be faithful in the least. Tonight, I've communicated to you, bigger and better starts with you. Nothing changes until in your mind you, you begin to change. Nothing changes until you look within yourself and say, I need to do better. I need to be bigger. Not bigger than them, bigger than what I've been. Not better than them, but better than what I have been. Sometimes you're mad and upset for no apparent reason, and you begin to project on others. Come on, get that together. Examine yourself. Father, I've given to your people this listening audience Thank you for those that have tuned in and even those that have, that have bared with us tonight through some of the technical difficulties. I ask that you would you'd bless them. I ask that you would strengthen them. I ask that you would give them the wherewithal in their psyche to change where they need to change, to be in their mind so that their body can follow and their environment around them. I ask them that you would give them the courage and the wisdom and the grace 
to analyze their, themselves, to evaluate themselves, and to make the hard decision, the hard calls, and the hard adjustments. I ask that you would bless them to be faithful in the least. When we learn how to master and be faithful in the least, we'll never have to ask you for more because <laughs> less beget more. When we're faithful in it, it brings it to us. Thank you for the truth in your word. Thank you for the time in your presence. Maybe there's someone tonight listening, watching, where you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Now is your time to commit your heart to Jesus, to repent of your sins, to, to turn away from those ungodly thoughts that's been consuming your mental energy, to turn away from those habits that have made you sick of yourself while evaluating, and to turn away from being reckless and careless in the least of things. Give your heart to Jesus, my friend, my brother, ma'am, sir. Tonight is your night. This is a special night for you to believe that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose from the dead. And according to your faith, ask him to come into your life and save you. And he will do that. He will do that. He will save you. You ask him to be the savior of your life. And then maybe there's someone looking for a church home. Look no further. You've been tracking with us online. You've been watching and enjoying. And, and, and you have identified that the voice that God uses in this house is the voice to speak directly into your life. Then you should go to our website, ablm1.org, and find the link, join. You become a partner, become a member, and we'll make the appropriate connection to receive you in to be a better life ministry family. And you can do that remotely from where you are. Technology and its apparatus have allowed us to do that. And uh, we will connect. We will connect. I'll become your pastor. And you will have a church family here uh, where that walls will not prevent us from connecting and you being a part of the body of Christ and this local assembly. All right. This is our prayer. And we pray that you were blessed. I'm going to ask now that every member, every partner would commit your tithe. You have a tithe tonight. The tithe is the first tenth of all of our substance, all of our income. Will you do that now? Go to the website, maneuver, navigate, and commit your tithe. Those of you that have the midweek offering, as did we ask all of our members, in the middle of the week, we have two services, one on Sunday, and generally on Wednesday, and it is in those two service formats that we appeal to God's people, to the members, to the partners, that they might sow and give so that the house of God, so that this ministry could continue to not only reach you, but reach all corners of the world. And it is your liberal gift, it is your support financially that helps us do that, helps us do that. I'm excited about ministry. We've got Key Kids Ministry. We've got Plug Ministry. You've heard some of our announcements. We have a Christian Academy. We have a daycare. We have senior ministry. We have uh, young adult ministry. We've got men's ministry. We've got a lot of ministry going on. A lot of ministry going on. And what helps us do what God have called us to do is the upkeep of God's house, even in some of y'all's absence, where you've not returned. But one day you'll look to return. And... Uh, We'll be right here. But again, it is your gift. It is your help and support. And perhaps if there's someone tonight, because this happens too, there are some people that may not have the requested amount, the required amount of $20, and they just don't give anything. Don't let that be you tonight. If you don't have that, give what you can and let God bless you. Let God, let God multiply it back to you. But all of you that can, let's do that now, as I will do the same. Uh, until Sunday morning, we believe here at A Better Life Ministry that the key to life is a better life. Go in God's peace.